exit the bank and head for the finish line. Richard Petty goes back in front. They both spin. They're in the wall. Petty is sliding, slamming into the wall. He's coming down toward the finish line. Will he make it? He's still moving. The car stops. 300, 400 feet shy of the finish line. Pearson is still running. Petty trying to fire to come across the line. David Pearson moving down through as they come to the stripe. The winner is car number 21. Ken Squire grew up the son of a newspaper man in Waterbury, Vermont. One day the owner of the paper told his dad that more people could hear than could read. So out of that came WDEV Radio and also young Ken Squire's interest in painting pictures with words, a skill that would not only serve him well in the world of motorsports broadcasting, but endear him to generations of race fans. Into turn three, he fireballs his way into the lead, goes out in front by one, two, three car lengths. Mike Joy of Fox Sports fondly remembers Ken Squire as a man that wore many hats. He was, first of all, a track announcer, then a racetrack owner and promoter who created a whole series for late model cars in New England that began as NASCAR North and then morphed into uh, the American Canadian Tour. As an announcer, he was a public address announcer at Daytona who Bill France Sr. charged with starting a radio network. And Ken and Roger Bear built Motor Racing Network from the ground up. Ladies and gentlemen, hello from Charlotte, North Carolina where some 90,000 race fans have gathered to see 40 of the top racing cars in the United States do their tricks for 600 miles. It is the longest race in the country. It will be before a record... Between anchor announcers, turn announcers, and pit announcers, Ken taught all of us how to paint word pictures of what was happening on the racetrack so that the listener could really see the race on the radio. We'd be getting ready for a restart, and he'd go, all right, Grandma, put your teeth in your pocketbook for this one. And you knew something big was likely to happen. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. Donnie Allison slides. They hit again. They drive into the turn. They're hitting the wall. They're head on the wall. They slide down to the inside. Let's watch those third-place cars. They're out of it. They're coming around for the finish. Here they come. Waltrip trying to slingshot. Petty is out in front at the line. Waltrip to the inside. Petty wins it. Down on pit road. It has gone crazy. The Petty crew is out there jumping up and down. Petty has won it. His 186th career. And, and there's a fight between Kale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing they're angry they know they have lost and what a bitter defeat fellow vermonter and prn's co-anchor mark garrow has very fond recollections of squire when you heard ken squire you were listening to the best that's when i first thought about hey i want to maybe try this i want to try to get myself some way somehow to daytona and work for Motor Racing Network, who I just heard of. I didn't even know that something existed that people did radio broadcasts of NASCAR races. Didn't even know that existed until Ken came along that day and he did it. And I thought, you know what? This isn't such a crazy dream after all. It is possible. And I just remember sitting in that tower, watching that race, thinking, this is what I want to do. I don't know if I can ever get that good, but this is what I want to do and he came from Vermont. He didn't come from the South. It gave us all hope that we could, if we had the ability, could come down to the South and could do NASCAR. Without him, I don't think there's ever a path that would ever be open for a number of announcers like myself that have been in it for a long, long time. I don't think we would have even thought about it. There wouldn't have been a path, wouldn't have been a road uh, to Daytona. When future historians write about the wonders of the world, save at least one chapter for this. The world's fastest motor speedway, the Alabama International Motor Speedway here at Talladega, Alabama. I think you could make the argument that NASCAR never got to where it is today without Ken Squire and about him battling TV executives that this sport was worth airtime and not just for highlights, but hey, we need to do it from the drop of the green flag 
to the checkered flag. I don't think we ever got to where we are today without him breaking that door down because at that time, nobody thought this was worthy of two, three, four, or five hours of broadcast time until Ken Squires convinced him that it was. And here we are today. Covering a city block in less than a second. Dave Moody of MRN and also a fellow New Englander is another branch of the Ken Squire tree. I learned early on that trying to emulate Ken Squire just made you sound like a very poor Ken Squire imitator. The, the lines that he came up with, the phrases that he created came out of his head. They came for the most part at the spur of the moment and nobody's ever been better at it, for sure. Into turn three, he fireballs his way into the lead, goes out in front by one, two, three car lengths. All the leading car owners, the patrons of the art are here today. Talk about a choo-choo train. And look at that Oklahoma land rush back there. It's not coincidental that a high percentage of the people that make their living talking about stock car racing on TV or on the radio originally came from the northwest corner of the United States. And... That all has to do with Ken Squire. He was a mentor to so many of us. He taught me, certainly, uh, and many others, just about everything we know about this sport. He opened doors, he pushed, he prodded, and it never occurred to him, I don't think once in his entire life, that maybe one of these kids that he was teaching and prodding and opening doors for and recommending might someday you know, become somebody that might take his job on down the road. I don't think it ever occurred to him his whole career was based on paying it forward and trying to help other people do what he did, and that's find a place to spend their entire life at the sport that they love. Jack Aroot, longtime broadcaster, is another graduate of Ken Squire University. Whether it was Mike Joy, Dave Moody, myself, Dick Bergeron, uh, Alan Bestwick, each one of us was impacted in one way or the other by Ken Squire. He basically gave me my start at the Motor Racing Network, he was an exacting guy. And what I mean by that is he would give you the rope, but also he would mentor you afterwards, probably outside of maybe Bill France Sr. and Bill France Jr. Ken Squire was probably in that same sentence in terms of, you know, foundationally establishing NASCAR as we know it today. It is going to be a land rush to decide the Daytona 500. It's down to the inside every so often to scoop some fresh air into the automobile because the gauges begin to roll around and get red and rosy out there. It's an art form that Ken coined, but it's also something that, you know, I think personally over on the, on the television side is woefully lacking these days because everybody's all caught up in you know, and all the, the, the onboard telemetry and the ghost cars. and Well, you know, Ken was the guy that would tell the story about Cale Yarbrough while, while he was leading, let's say, the Daytona 500. And at his fingertips, he'd say, this is the same guy that 12 years ago jumped out of an airplane at the Beaufort Water Festival with his parachute packed in a lard can. You know, I don't know where he came up with this stuff, but all of a sudden, I was like, wow, I didn't know that. And he was, that was extremely important to him. And he felt an obligation for us to humanize the athletes. Once again, we hear from Mike Joy, who sums up the legacy and the impact of Ken Squire. Ken Squire helped us recognize the drivers and associate them with the cars they were in. But more than that, he made us care about them as people, respect them as athletes, and look up to them as heroes. That's why he's my hero.